Kago and Donna Summer with a song called Hot Stuff. It's just gone about eight minutes past the hour of four o'clock on a Tuesday. Myself, John B, you're on Hyperdrive. Uh, my fellow uh, compatriots have all left me. They just said, no, we've had enough of you now. So, um, yeah, we're flying solo until six o'clock. But we're not solo for now. We're going to be joined right now by none other than Brad Peacock. I want to say a very good afternoon to you, Brad. How are you doing there, brother? Just got to unmute yourself there for us and we can have a quick chat with you. There we go. There we go. Easy does it. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. We're good. We're good, Brad. Welcome to Hyperdrive. And thank you so much for being on to Chapter One Radio with us here. Um, you know, it's, it's always an honor having artists and producers and everyone else coming on to the show and having a chat. Um, how are you doing? I'm very, very well. Even better. Since we can go to the beaches, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were actually our topic of discussion is quite quite down that alley and i think we may just discuss that in a little bit as well but we're gonna have a quick sure. five five questions quick fire it's a, a or b questions um just to get to know brad a little bit more and um you know it's gonna be very quick fire it's gonna be easy so the qu first question i've got for you is gonna be spur or mcdonald's spur. adidas spur. or nike nike, nike. Now, nah, I thought as much. Chris Brown or Neo? Chris Brown. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. Football or rugby? Uh, football, football. Okay, okay. And now what, the last one was going to be beach or grass? Uh, <laughs> definitely beach. Yeah, no, I thought so. Just just giving a bit of a get to know there, and obviously uh, it's always fun to get a little bit of information there. Obviously, Nike was a giveaway with the sweater you have on, um, you know. But um, we we wanted to ask you a bit more about the football or or, or the rugby situation because I know there were some uh, social messages there on your your WhatsApps and stuff that we saw with regards to results. We're not going to go into it. We're not going to go into it. I'm, I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show you something. Okay, um, <laughs> I was going to wear it. I, I was going to wear this, the cap, but I thought, nah, you know, we don't, we don't want to start this on the wrong foot, you know. Um, <laughs> um, the guys got lucky. Lucky, so, lucky. Are we, lucky. are we, are we discussing last year's league or the or the past few results? Because if we're going to go there, then this topic of discussion may change completely. All right, and, and we're not going to talk <laughs> about music at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Morally, I love it. morally, we won that game. Morally, morally. Morally. Oh, my morally word. Coming, coming, from, coming from a supporter as yourself, we're not going to mention what team, what team you support and all the rest. We don't want to have any uh, bad messages come through our, our WhatsApp line for you. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. Um, but, Brad, like I said, welcome and thank you so much for coming on. We want to we want to really discuss this track of yours and 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 what kind of waves it's been making in the industry. You know, you've been getting a lot of a lot of reaction towards it, and you know that that obviously is great. So, for our listeners out there, tell us more about how the journey for Brad Peacock actually started and and, and what age it kind of started for you. Sure. So basically, this journey of music started. 2019, 2019, 18. Wow. Okay. Well, for, before that, I was busy playing football. I was a semi-professional soccer player at the time. Okay. And then that didn't work out. <laughs> and then I started to go a lot to the jaw. I was always in the clubs, you know, working, yeah. doing my normal work. And then basically what happened was I kind of had this feeling like, hey, I want to become a DJ. And then I took upon myself uh, to learn how to do this. I watched a whole lot of YouTube videos. And okay. basically, from that came me DJing. And, and, you know, basically, or nurturing this love for music. Mm. However, mm. I've always loved music because I've been playing drums for most of my life. Nice. As a drummer, yeah, I started playing from a very small age. And then, you know, just kept basically at that standard. And mm. then... After that, I decided to go into music production. Nice. Um, again, the main teacher was YouTube. YouTube taught me the jets of it. And that's basically just me applying myself. Yes. And then from 2018 to 2000, 
now. <laughs> I'm basically being in that space of learning how to um, get a bit easier, learning how to use the tools that I do have. Mm. It's not the best tools in the world. I'm going to use it and I'm going to see what is going to come of that. And through awesome. the years, especially during lockdown, mm -hmm. um, when it started last year, I've grown exponentially. And like literally because you can see it and you can feel it when people yes. um, react to your music a certain way, then surely you're doing something right. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. So then I was just humbled by, you know, learn, being able to watch something and apply that again. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Something I wasn't really good on at school. <laughs> mm, but mm, it kind of mm. worked. So since then, I've just decided to basically religiously do this every day, practice it every day, and see how I can make the art better and create music that people can like or people mm. can like. Mm. I love that. I love I love the honesty, you know, and I, I like the fact that you've you've kind of mentioned the the, the fact that you didn't have any how can I say the, the proper schooling for creating and, and producing music, you know, it's all being self-taught. And for me, that, that day is a, is a whole dynamic in itself, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's just so amazing to actually hear that from somebody else other than just uh, myself or anybody else. I mean, it's, we've been doing radio for the past six years, you know, and I mean, from before that, we were recording artists and writing music and stuff like that, but that was never my calling. You know, I could never see myself being in the in the in the, in the recording studio for long because my voice, nah, it's not there. It's not for singing. I can tell you now, it's there for talking and being here behind the microphone. I got the face for radio apparently as well. Um, you know, but <laughs> it's just it's just so amazing to hear that. And I, I want to thank you for that humbleness and honesty of yours. I, you you touched on you touched on lockdown. You know, and the, the yeah. question I've really got for you, you've you really told us the positive side of being in lockdown and how it's it's empowered you to to be to become the artist that you become. But were there any negative aspects with regards to lockdown for you? And were there any kind of like times in your in this time that we're in that you kind of just thought negatively about what you were doing in your journey? Well, definitely, man. Definitely, I'm sure a lot of people uh, can agree. So. What you, what you don't know is during lockdown, I, I kind of, I was part of this group, right? And it's the first time I'm saying this publicly. Wow. <laughs> I was part of this group called Abnormal. Okay. So we've made music together, right? It was really something good. You know what I mean? That we could take out of something bad. Then, unfortunately, towards the end of the year, something happened, which led the whole group to, you know what I mean? Uh, Stop. So we stopped yes. it together and we were doing it pretty well, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I wish them both of the best and they, I'm sure they wish the same for me. Mm. So with the lockdown, like there was a lot of risk. And I swear, I swear, bro, you like especially with music, I can I do not know when I'm something out what is going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can like it. The yes. 10 other people on my WhatsApp that I see that you can like it, but I do not know. What yes. is going to happen? It's entirely up to the viewers mm. and the sound rooms and the people's ears. Mm. So basically, in the lockdown has just been, oh, it's been tough. You know, just to be sitting here, but it's also been a blessing in disguise. Yes. Because that's given you more than enough time to create, to be here and nurture and, you know, basically yeah. grow the art. Get better. Absolutely. So me, if you're telling me that the lockdown was hard for you, and that's because you were probably just sitting all day, you know, complaining about it. Precisely. In that space of the lockdown, you could have taught yourself something. I told a lot of my friends, I mm. told them, you guys are going to do Photoshop. Or learn how to be a DJ. You could have gone and just learn. Yeah. Just every day learn. Something. Absolutely. So... Absolutely, big ups on that. I, I like that, and it's a positive, a positive twist to saying it's really been negative for most of the world, not for the our country. I, you yeah. know, I, I always touch on that because Chapter One Radio, a bit of history here. We were a one-man band, myself personally, for almost a year and a half. You know, when I started this project, Chapter One Radio was myself. I did two shows a day, worked full time, and it was just a vision and a, pro a project that I was busy with to empower others. Yeah. And, since lockdown happened, uh, we've now got into having 17 different producers or, or, or presenters, shall I say, um, and having live shows from seven in the morning right through to eight at night, you know, and for me, that's, that is exponential growth, just like you said, and it's lockdown, and we can say it. I mean, we've turned the negative into a massive positive for, for the industry itself, and not just for others individuals as well, but 
let's go into this topic of discussion and this song, Pretty Girls. Okay, so tell us more about how this song came about. You know, to give us a bit of a breakdown as to what the song is going, what's going on there, man. <laughs> so, so basically, the song Pretty Girl was just basically my experiences. You know, so as a writer, there's two ways you can write music. You can write from personal experiences or from what you yes. see or what you've heard. Yes. So most of the songs, personal experiences, I won't mention her name. No, um, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, I took this girl and yeah. we went, I, I took it on a classy date, I took it golden dish. I tried my best to create a type of sound that would be yes. with the national type of music, mm. but then also keeping it local mm. with the jargon, you know, yes. like Sabuel, yes. um, and certain things like that. Like, I tried my best to do that. So mm. that because if other families can do it, if Nigerian artists can do it, if the UK artists can do it, then surely we can, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, basically, the song Pretty Girl is just experiences in my life, mm -hmm. um, with this brown eyed girl, and I just put it on paper and it's work, you know, it just work, and then you just use it and you go with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would not want uh, you to mention anyone's names. I must be honest with you. That would definitely not be a good thing, um, you know, because we don't know how the situation may turn out from there. I don't want to get any kind of lawsuits here. <laughs> you know, it's, no, 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 it's no, no, a touchy no. subject. It's a touchy subject. Let's not yeah. go there. You know, but the response and the reaction you've had from the song has been absolutely phenomenal. You know, I, I, I've seen the social media presence and what the people have been giving you feedback on and, you know, certain people actually dancing to the song and giving you different videos and setting things in. How has that response made you feel? To be honest, it's given me like this extra boost of uh, like motivation to keep on, you know what I yes. mean? Because it's, I did not expect Surge to make the reaction with you for other people, random people to tell me, yo, did you make a song? Did you make the beat? Did you write to it? Did you do on the CD? Yes. And it gives you that extra bit of motivation to just improve yourself every, every single time. So that's basically what happened, man. Like, Absolutely. I'm just yeah. humbled by the response and I'm not going to stop. That's basically it. I'm not stopping. I like that. I like the fact that you said you're not going to stop because I was, that was my next question is what is next? You know, what projects are we, are we looking forward to in, the, in, this, in this year itself? Are there any collaborations maybe coming up? Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've got like an inundated with messages saying, hey, we'd like to collab with you or, you know, we'd like to feature on a track. It, it's, it happens. Yeah. It, it happens all the time. In the industry, I know that because we manage our own artists. So I know exactly how that happens. It's just out of nowhere. It just explodes, you know, and that's a good feeling. But are there anything we can you can disclose? Is there anything you can disclose now with regards to coming up this year or is there anything personal that you will be working on in the next few months? So as for now, I received a few, um, you know, messages to collab with certain people as well. I've reached out to other people. Yes. But what I've told everyone in general is it's just now about me creating this rep because I want to create a certain type of rep so that people that when we do collab or I can yes. them whether they're higher or lower or on the same level, mm. there's a win-win. You know what I mean? Yes. There's a total win-win. So Absolutely. as for now, I'm just going to be releasing, um, there's a song called In My Fields, uh, that's a song I'm going to keep for like another I, month I, or two. I did, I did <laughs> see the preview one. to it, I, I heard the preview to it on your on status, yeah, you know, I'm going to be honest with I you, like, I love it, yeah. I love what I hear, I love what I hear Thank brother, so I can tell you now it's so going to be, it's going to be a hit, definitely. Um, so I'm glad, you know, I'm really, I'm, this is what we need in the industry. We need more individuals that are actually willing to, to not, not like you said, not just work with somebody on your own level or actually aspire to work with people on a higher level and even on a lower level, you know, the, in, the, the entry level guys that, that need the kind of exposure that need to and want to build in the industry. It's, it's an important aspect of the industry. And I really like that. I, I really, I think we'll be we'll be chatting personally uh, very very soon. I've got some 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 in, oh. ideas, some mental ideas going through my head already, um, and I just feel that you know there's so much to offer. I I wanted to ask you, and obviously now talking about the, the lower levels and upper levels, if there were if there was anything you could give as an advice for any young up and coming artists, what would your advice as Brad Peacock be? Is main thing as an artist, what I've done with 
just do what you love. And when you do what you love, you will see that type, that type of adrenaline, right? That will make you continue and yes. you continue to grow, even if you don't see it immediately or mm. two years or three years. Look, it's taken me four years to kind of get to the level where I can say my production is being, that's good. It's yes. now at the level where I can say it's good. So it takes time for it can happen instantly. But take your art, focus on it. Don't worry about what anybody else is. You yes. literally need to have that time of vision and focus on what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, I promise you the rest will follow. You know, the rest ah. will I like that. I really do like that. I, I'm not going to keep you up for too much longer, to be honest with you. I, I, I do know that the two of us will be having a chat very, very soon. Um, you know, and I, I wanted to just say, I wanted to say that, you know, we wish you all the best of luck in the industry itself. You know, you are seriously a, a breath of fresh air in the times that we're in at the moment, to be honest with you. And it's, it's so refreshing to have artists like yourself coming through and, and actually just showcasing their natural talents, you know, their God-given talents and the talents that you've been working on for years. It's, it's seriously humbling. And we wish you all the best here, right here from Chapter One Radio and Hyperdrive. We really do. And we, we, we're going to create a relationship here. We will have you on more often. I promise you that, you know, we'll have you on the platform. We'll give you the platform. It's one of those things I really feel that we need to we need to give the platform for artists like yourself to actually just be able to tell their side of the story and what the struggles have been for you and everything else. And we we appreciate that. We really, really do look forward to what's coming from you. Um any final words from your side? And we're gonna go into your track obviously as well. But uh, you can obviously send some special shout outs or any dedications out there for somebody who may be tuned in. You're more than welcome to say that right now. Um, and then we'll go into your track in a bit. Sure. Firstly, I'd just like to say thank you, Chuck Mamadeli, and yourself for reaching out. It really means the world. It really, really, it really means the world. Um, I wish you guys all the best also for the, for the shows and things for growing also. Thanks, bro. And I want to send a shout out. <laughs> To the pretty girl with the brown eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, big shout out to the pretty girl with the brown eyes. Um, having a song made, a name mentioned after you is a, is an honor. And that's what it, you know, it's, it's amazing to have that kind of vibe. I, like I said, wish you all the best, Brad. And we will definitely be in touch. We're going to be playing your track right now. Pretty Girl by none other than Brad Peacock. Guys, go to your socials, check him out. And go see what this guy is all about. You will see that the, the passion is in his music. And you're going to see more stuff coming from him very, very soon. We wish him all the best. Absolutely. Amen to that, brother. Getting into that song right now and something from Pop Smoke in a bit as well as a bit of news and sports. We'll be back after these. <laughs> 